everyone that has some vision left, just your life is harder than someone that's fully blind, in my opinion. Socially, mentally, it's really hard. So just realize, I know it feels hard now, but every day that you lose your vision more, it gets easier. And so just like, just realize you're at the hardest point. Justin Bishop, welcome to the See Through Podcast, man. What's going on, man? I'm so stoked to have you on. Uh, I've been wanting to have you on for a long time, and we, we've talked a few times, but it's finally worked out. Yeah. And uh, I'm excited to chat with you. You got some downtime from what I understand. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm <laughs> available for the next uh, four months. So <laughs> so you just uh, tore your ACL, am I right? Tore my ACL, my meniscus, and uh, I had bone fragments fused to my hamstring uh, from a past injury. So they just went in and cleaned everything up. Yeah, I had I had a knee surgery similar back in like 2016 where they uh, did the orthoscopy where they uh, yeah. they poked holes in my cartilage and then sucked out some of the floating like materials. Oh, and- yeah. Um, and I had to like lay in bed and I had it like, they had to hook me hooked to this machine that like made my leg move back and forth. Oh, wow. To cut, Cause they were like, if you don't move your leg, it'll like atrophy and like it won't yeah. have blood flow and it won't heal correctly or something. And, yeah. Yeah. And I had to do that for like a month, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mine's just, uh, right now you got to keep it straight. I can't like, I have to keep it like extremely straight where it almost like hurts. I got to uh, do that for about like two weeks and then, then I can start bending it. It's no fun. No fun. <laughs> Most of my audience, a hundred percent knows who you are and, uh, they might've pieced it together already based <laughs> off an ACL injury that you're some sort of athlete of some kind. Yeah. Um, you're a skateboarder. Um, yeah. how about, how about you introduce yourself for people who maybe are, you know, new to yeah. you? Yeah. Um, so my name is Justin Bishop. I'm an amateur skateboarder. Uh, I skate for, uh, street plant skateboards, uh, fallen footwear, um, independent trucks, Bronson bearings and, uh, Nixon watches. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've been skating my whole life and, uh, I've been skating blind for coming up on eight years now. Right on. Yeah, man. Uh, your, your skating is, is super impressive. Um, you know, I've had, uh, Anthony Ferrara, I had Dan Mancina on the podcast before. So it's like, oh, rad. you know, and, uh, Did you it have seems like together. Yeah, I had yeah, them on yeah, together. Yeah. Eyes. Yeah, good. yeah, I've actually had them on <laughs> separately and then I had them on together. So it's uh oh, good. It's been cool to get to know them. But yeah, uh following you guys on social media and like that whole crew and just kind of the the vibe you guys have, it seems like you guys have like have really good like camaraderie and kind of energy when you guys are around each other. Yeah, I mean, because there's not many blind skateboarders, so like the stuff we're into is so like niche that uh, we actually became really good friends. Like we we text each other constantly. We're yeah going like phone calls, just checking up, you know, just because like also Anthony has like a crazy life with like judo and <laughs> everything like that, and I'm so yeah. curious about like you know that aspect of uh, you know sports. So you know, I'm always like curious about that and hitting him up. Yeah, it seems like you guys all have a good sense of humor too. And I think yeah. that's what draws draws me to you because like you know the uh, the blind world the disability world it can it it depends on who you follow or who you listen to but it's like there's so many varying perspectives and and ways of viewing you know how Mm -hmm. how life is so it's like I, i find uh the vibe you guys have refreshing Yeah. Yeah. I know like with, um, me and Dan, uh, Dan is fully blind too. And, uh, we've talked about in the past, like when we were visually impaired, it was like a different life. And now that we're past it, it's almost like we passed the finish line. Like once you become fully blind, it makes life so much easier, like socially that like you almost like, this is the new me. Um, you know, you get to that finish line, but you know, I always feel bad for people that are going through vision loss or visual impairment because every day is a new accept, like you're accepting a new version of yourself every day. And it's a constant like insecurity and just a battle. So, um, I promise if you go fully blind, it gets a lot better. It's like, I've never <laughs> been happier. Like, uh, last time I was this happy is when I could see, but the middle ground was the worst. Yeah, I'm in the middle ground. Like, yeah. I, that's kind of my perspective as a host is like, you know, I, yeah. that's kind of what I feel like I bring to the table is like, you know, my mom's legally blind, but she still has some like central vision. Yeah. So like I'm headed to the legally blind world. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of like, it, it's kind of tripping me up because it's like, I know what's coming and I'm a video editor as my career. Yeah. 
And it's just kind of like, it felt really daunting. And that's kind of why I started this podcast. So I could, uh, basically hear and learn from, you know, people who are like straight up, just killing it, you know, with blindness. So, yeah. Uh, you're the perfect person to talk to. Yeah. And that's good to hear that you said go, going fully blind is actually uh, way easier. I've had past, a few past mm-hmm. guests tell me that too. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, like yeah, I mean, things get harder, but uh, but then you don't have to adapt. You just like, that's your new level of just normal. Um, so like I, I didn't start, like in your words, killing it until I went fully blind because like, yeah. I, I was visual, visually impaired for – close to seven to eight years, like legally and, uh, uh, no, seven years, uh, le- uh, legally blind. And, um, man, it was like the worst. Cause I also had like, things were blurry. So for the first three years, I didn't use a cane cause I like didn't really need it, but I was still bumping into stuff. So like, then, you know, you, you don't know how to have those social cues anymore. Uh, and you're still trying to depend on your site when your site's not dependable at all but you're still holding on to it. Uh, So those times were just the roughest. Uh, But yeah, once the full bandaid came off is just, I was like, okay, this is my new normal. I don't have to adapt anymore. So it was, it was good. No, that that's great to hear. I mean, I, I watched that documentary, the New Yorker documentary that you were featured in. Mm -hmm. And um, it gave me like goosebumps. That was a really well-made doc. Um, Oh yeah. um, That I'm sure it was a really cool thing to be a part of. Yeah, it was really cool. But the, uh, you know, when you were talking about your story, like, you know, you were a young skateboarder, then you were diagnosed with RP and then you had to stop driving. And then you kind of had this grieving process where you kind of locked yourself in your room. Yeah, I, actually, the grieving process didn't happen until I went fully blind because um, I lost my driver's license. And then I was I was in that visual impairment world of like things were just kind of like blurry or because uh, I like my version of RP, I lost my central vision and then to the outside, other people get like tunnel vision and I lost my central vision first. Interesting. Yeah, that, that um, is that's yeah. quite the opposite. I mean, you know, mine's like, you know, pretty standard, you know, peripheral first, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They actually thought it was stars guards until I got, um, genetically tested. Um, we have RP that runs in the family. So they're like pretty sure it was RP, yeah. but, uh, no one in my family, everyone in my family had the normal RP that was tunnel vision, but my mutation, uh, is a different mutation than like my uncle that, uh, became blind. Yeah. That's interesting. Do so, you know the name of your like mutation? Yeah. It's a RPGR. RPGR. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a, uh, more aggressive central vision loss, uh, uh, type of, um, RP. Do you have any beef with, you know, the other versions of RPs? Like, do you, do you, <laughs> oh, no. no, if anything, I feel left out. Cause like I'm in all these like RP groups and you know, it's, uh, it's, you, you, you kind of feel like left out because everyone's talking about their tunnel vision or going blind in their like fifties or sixties. Yeah. So that's what I was, I was told I would go blind in my fifties and sixties. Um, but, uh, the verge, the mutation I have is just way more aggressive and just worked in a different way. Um, so yeah, sometimes I, I get, uh, more in common with like, uh, people that are fully blind now than the RP group, but it helped when I, uh, had some vision left. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Cause I, I've learned that, you know, you know, that classic, you know, phrase, you know, the, the, about blindness being a spectrum Yeah, and how it's like, you know, the, the people in the fully blind camp you know you guys have a almost like it's like your own community and then you're also a part of like you know the the visually impaired legally blind community too but it's almost like yeah. a, a little subculture within the blindness spectrum of you know the fully blind mm-hmm. would you agree with that yeah 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 because you, you know it, there's we're just on different uh, uh social levels like when it comes to like uh, I know like when you're visually impaired, I had it too, uh, cane shame when you're like, yeah. you, you fight with yourself because you're like, oh, I, I can see, but, but I need it. But like, I don't want people to judge me. And so you, you have this internal monologue in your brain and then like fully blind people. It's like, well, that's how I leave the house. Like there's yeah. no uh, version of like, I can't be ashamed of how I get around. And so it's kind of like, uh, like different stuff like that. I've, I've noticed, um, that like, you know, things that they're working on is different things than we're working on. So, gotcha. um, but it's, you know, it's, it's as long as we're in like the whole, cause, um, 
we need the spectrum really bad to bring uh, enlightenment to blindness and visual impairment because like what happened to like me and Dan and a couple other people that are fully blind, like it's so rare to be fully blind. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I think like was like, two percent of people that start going blind are only fully blind or yeah so it, it's kind of crazy well it's like even when i was diagnosed when i was 12 like i was too young to kind of comprehend it but when i got into my 20s and i you know started to more like feel anxiety about you know my rp in my head it was you know i was going to be fully blind but it's like in reality i don't even know if that's if, if i ever will be fully blind you know, I think it's my, my brain yeah. goes the worst case scenario, you know, and it's like, but it's like <clears throat> now I'm learning like, you know, my mom's, you know, 65 and she still has some usable vision. So maybe I, yeah. you know, maybe I'll follow her route, you know, but my, my sister who has RP, who's older than me, I have less vision than her. So it's like, it's kind of uh tricky. It's, it's, it's confusing. And when I say worst case scenario, I mean how, how you yeah. hype it up in your head, you know, when, when you're like, when yeah. you're early in the process and how you kind of, how you think yeah. about it, you know, so it, it's still, I think that's part of maybe if I had to guess why you, why you're saying it's easier. Is, is there any truth yeah, to that? Because it's like, you don't have to, there's no more overthinking it. There's also no cure so like i know with like the is, is it the e60 rp thing that doesn't cure rp it just stops it so um like you know if any any kind of like uh curements or you know things like that like uh, kind of like when hope is pulled away from yeah. you then you're not holding on to gotcha. it anymore so it's kind of like uh so i always thought that when i could see i was always like thinking like all right there's gonna be a cure there's gonna be a cure and just just hold out and now i'm like ah you know if there's a cure i would take it uh, if it would re restore my vision but you know besides that i'm like ah you know this is me now yeah no that, so. that makes that makes sense and uh yeah the cure is even something that i've learned that I, I personally, I, I try not to get too hung up on it because it's like, yeah, yeah. I feel like they've been curing it since I was like a kid. So yeah, you can't get, yeah. Hung up yeah. On and it. my mom tells me about that. She's like, well, in the, in yeah. the eighties, they said that it was, you know, 10 years yeah. down the road. And, <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, there is some awesome yeah. science going on and some yeah. breakthroughs. So I'm not like not hopeful, yeah. but I'm also not like banking on it. And I think that's kind of the healthy place to be versus like, and like Googling every day, like, where's <laughs> yeah. it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? You know? Yeah. 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 I'm hoping for that, that, uh, you know, what, what's the Elon thing, the neuro link. Yeah. I'm hoping for that. I'd, I'd get on that first. I'd try it. Are they saying, I know they're, they're talking about Neuralink can help with like uh, paralysis and things like that. Is that, are yeah. they saying it can help with vision too? I'm not too familiar, honestly. Yeah, they're saying that the first two applications will be um, for amputees to move um, like different muscles or, you know, to be able to uh, be mobile and then also uh, to cure blindness. So like those are the first two applications they're aiming for. But Mr. Beast cured blindness, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always love that. I had some people like hitting me up in my uh, inbox. I was like, oh, you should get on this. Yeah. And I had to explain like, ah, oh, cataracts, it's like the best example I had to give people, it's like, you know, if like your hands are cold from numbness and you like, somebody gives you gloves to warm them up, it's going to warm them up. But if you're an amputee and you can't feel your, your hands from numbness, there's a different reason, yeah. you know, <laughs> like yeah, gloves aren't going to fix an amputee's like numbness or not being able to feel their hands. So, uh, yeah, cataracts is just like a, uh, pretty much a blanket over your eyes that they can, you know, laser off. Yeah. I, I you know, one, it's like, I don't want to get too deep into that that whole controversy around Mr. Beast and what he did and didn't do, but, um, ah. but yeah, it, it's it's, but yeah, it's like the cataract thing. Like I picked up on it instantly. I was like, because the the title was like real clickbaity. It was like Mr. Beast cures a thousand people's blindness, or or miss or a thousand people see for the first time. Like that was, and yeah. I was like, these people could see. They just it was blurry, and they didn't always have you know, these cataracts, you know, so it's like, or maybe some of them, yeah. did, I don't know, but it, it, it just yeah. seemed very like, like he stretched the truth, but I mean, he's just playing the whole, you know. Yeah. Game. Yeah. That was my only thing was like, uh, I wish he named it something. Cause like the video is amazing. Cause it, yeah. the, the main part of it, when I listen to it, it, it talks about like the, this is curable blindness in America 
that people can't get access to. So that blew my yeah. mind. Like, I feel like if you just said that, like, yo, America, we can cure this. And there's people that have curable blindness that we're not even touching. Yeah. Like I would have been, I mean, I'm still stoked on the video. I, I thought it was uh, done really well. It's just that one clickbait um, title. That's it. Yeah. That's all my only problem with it was just the clickbait title. But besides that, I was like, dude, it's, it brings so much uh, um, enlightenment to uh, the medical system here in America. You know, one of the things that blow my mind is that canes aren't available for anyone that's legally blind. But like ev- like every other medical um, equipment is uh, available to um, people through uh, Medicare or their insurance. Yeah, yeah. I I tried even like to get ahead of the curve and like sign up for O and M training. Like, and yeah. since I'm not legally blind yet, yeah. like they're just like basically like you'd have to pay for it out of pocket, you know. Um, so it's like, so it's kind of like it's hard to you know be I guess proactive and. In, without like dipping into your own bank account, you know? Yeah. Well, I have a different opinion on OMM training. I, I would say just check out YouTube stuff, learn some uh, skilled techniques, but no MM, uh, MMO instructor can really tell you how to maneuver your life. Everybody's environment's different. Like I live in a city yeah, and they wanted me to have like a 10 foot long cane. And I was like, this is insane. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to be hitting people. Yeah. Like, cause like there's, like people on the sidewalks, like it's so like crowded that like I can only, only have about three feet in front of me and they're like, no, nah, you need it like this. And so the minute somebody with sight tells you how to navigate, yeah, I was like, oh, peace. Yeah. That's you know? what I, I have a friend, Michael Tubiak. He, he has RP and he has a podcast, uh, living free with RP and he's part of another YouTube channel called the RP show. And, okay. uh, he, 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 uh, basically trained himself and he, he's basically tells, you know, me and yeah. other people in my situations to kind of just, just kind of go for it, you know? Yeah. It's not hard. It's, it's when it comes down to it, it's a stick, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, it's not the hardest thing to pick up. I like, like I said, I, I'm sure there's awesome uh, mobility instructors out there. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, I get mobility instructors hitting me up on my Instagram, telling me how to use my cane with skateboarding. And I'm just like, uh, no, like, do you skateboard? Yeah. Do you like, are, like, how are you going to tell me how to use my cane when I'm the one doing it? So it's just kind of like, I, like I said, I don't know. I haven't had the best uh, relationships with uh, mobility instructors, but if they help, they help but you don't have to go to those. You can just find, there's great stuff on YouTube to get the basics and then learn it on your own. Oh, right on. Yeah. I've, I've never like, I guess dive too deep into the YouTube world on, in terms of cane yeah. tutorials and stuff. But yeah, I, now that I think about it, I guarantee you there's tons of videos out there on it. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, there's like a handful of good ones and like, that's all you need. Just the basics. And, but you, you won't ever be able to learn until you just use it, you know? So pick up the basics, but then just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I see you with your, your skateboard, it's kind of iconic, you know, with the cane and, you know, you're, you skateboarding, you got, you know, you know, the sunglasses on, it's like, it's, it, yeah. it's like, uh, an iconic look, you know, and I was, you know, looking over yeah. your Instagram and to kind of learn more about you to kind of prep, you know, for, for yeah. this interview. And, and it's, and I learned like, 95% of your posts is just you, you skating. Like you're just like, you know, in uh, oh, yeah. yeah, which is, which is great. You know, that's, that's what the people want. They want to see, you know, you skating, but yeah, it's just like when I was scrolling, I, I kind of realized it's like, you know, Justin, he just likes to skateboard and, you know, it's kind of evident via uh, like what you post about, you know? Yeah. It's, that's my, my life before I went blind with skateboarding. Um, and so it's like now that like, I kind of like figured out life again, uh, that I can return to it. And that's my life. You know, there's so many other great, um, you know, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok creators, yeah. like uh, visual impairments doing awesome stuff on how we do things. So yeah. I feel like I don't have, I don't have to do that anymore. Like, you know, I, like mm-hmm. it's been so long since somebody's like, how are you replying to these? So I'm like, oh, great. Like these other people are doing like a great like job, like uh, explaining <laughs> voiceover and stuff. So yeah. like I get to just focus on skateboarding. Right on. Yeah. I saw one post where you, where you did, you opened up and you were kind of explaining that you know skateboarding is an escape 
um, for you and you kind of use it sometimes when you're maybe you're having like an anxious day or yeah. you uh, it kind of reminds you it's like you, you describe it as like skateboarding is something that I can do that a sighted person can't. Yeah, like, that's in the beginning. That's how I uh, I was kind of like getting like when I returned to skateboarding um, to get better and to regain my skills. I would just constantly be like, you know, uh, that person can drive, but he can't do this. And I'd just be doing a kickflip in my yeah. garage. I'm like, all right. So like it gives me some sense of um, skills that I have that not the average person has even with sight that, um, that gives me a little bit of, uh, confidence in myself. And, and I use it all the time to escape because like, you know, it's, when you're skateboarding, you don't have time to really think about anything. So you're thinking about the cane in front of you feeling you're, you're listening for your beeper, you're touching the ledge and there's so much going on and you haven't even started the trick yet. And there's no point in there where you're like, Oh yeah, I'm blind. And so like, it just, you just forget about it and you're just doing your thing. So yeah, it's, it's a great thing to just, uh, escape from that. And that's why I love goal ball or, you know, beeper ball, any, any sport, any blind or visually impaired person can get into. I highly suggest it because being active is oh, it's just something that will give you self-confidence. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I guess podcasting would be it for me a little bit like my hobby, but like, I also, yeah. you know, you know, exercise and, you know, go to the gym and lift weights. And it, it's good. like, uh, when you're in, when I'm in the gym or when I'm working out, it's like very peaceful, you know, or when you're in the zone, like if yeah. I'm editing and I'm just like kind of in a, in a groove with, with editing, it's kind of like, that's all I focus in and hone in on, you know? Um, so yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, I guess like my, my, my question with based off of that is like, let's say, you know, someone is in a similar situation that you were in where you, you had just kind of, they're, they're in the grieving phase and they think that they have to give up certain hobbies and certain things that like gave them that sense of fulfillment. Like, um, cause in that, in that documentary, your dad kind of, he kind of helped you tough love. Tough yeah. love works good for me. Yeah. Yeah. That works good for me, but it doesn't work yeah. the same for everybody. Um, so like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I always like have a problem when people like ask for like motivational advice because like mine's really rough. So like, uh, like, you know, my advice is just, you're getting nothing done laying in bed, you know, and feeling sorry yeah. for yourself. And one of the things that really helped me that my dad, you know, just said on the fly was like, I'm not the first person to go blind, you know? And I was like, oh yeah, I'm not. You know, like this isn't like that rare. It's, it's, it's common enough that, you know, the average person knows what the word yeah. blind means. So like, uh, just knowing that, like, I'm not the first person, you know? So it got me out of that, like, woe is me, poor me type of thing. And, uh, more into like a battle ready mode of like, all right, let's, let's, let's fight the day. Let's, let's kick the universe in the balls. Let's go, you know? So that's what got me going, but I know that's not what everybody needs So you know? Yeah. Sometimes so. tough love and just kind of simple, just simple advice and simple reminders kind of does the trick. It's like, you know, that classic, you like, like what your dad said, mm -hmm. it's really simple sentence. Like you're not the first to go blind, you know, yep. or yeah. So that, yeah. that's, that's good advice. Cause sometimes I feel like people get frozen in overthinking, you know, uh, they get frozen in thought, you know, or, or in, you know, and it seems yeah. like, like right now that the piece that you're describing, I think comes with one experience you you've had, quite a bit of time, you know, you know, learning to accept, you know, your vision loss and all that. But, but two, it's like, yeah. you're kind of not overthinking it anymore. I bet, you know? No, no. Like, like I said, that's why I always say like, uh, like I finished the race. I'm at the end, so I don't got to worry about these other things. Like this is just my yeah. life now, you know? So it's not, um, like, you know, like, so in our house, I'm not going to watch a TV show that doesn't have yeah. audio description. Like, there's no chance of me like being able to like, you know, back in the day in my early twenties, I can be like, all right, I think I can make out that figure and maybe every now and then be like, what's happening? What's that? But now I'm like, no, nah, this is, I mean, you know, my wife can watch it on her own or anything like that. But, uh, for me, it does nothing. So I'd rather just listen to a podcast or, you know, actually watch something with audio description. So there's just less options, yeah. I guess. So I just like, don't even worry about it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So it's like, yeah, I had a, um, a friend stay over and he's, um, 
legally blind from RP. And I'm, I'm not sure how much vision he has left. Um, yeah. But we were watching a TV show with my, my wife and like, he was just like, do you uh, mind if we put like audio descriptions on? And then yeah. to be honest, like that was like, I knew what they were because I am I have this podcast and I'm familiar, but I had never like truly turned them on or like even checked them out. And like, and I kind of, uh, to be, to be honest with you, it was kind of nice, like to have, it gave extra context to even for someone with sight, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad loves audio description now. Like sometimes we'll go over to his house and he just has it on doing the laundry because you don't have to pay attention. Oh yeah. That's actually, um, yeah, it turns a good everything idea. into like an audio book. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. It does turn it into like an audio book. Yeah. Yeah. My wife does the same thing now too. So she'll watch stuff, um, without me with audio description cause she doesn't have to pay attention. That's a good hack. That's a good hack. Yeah. Make, make yeah. anything an audio book, just turn on audio descriptions. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean like, you know, the, the deaf have it for, you know, you can have the TV on mute and, you know, be like working out or whatever at the gym. I know they have that. So I think that one should be ours for the sighted community. Like, ah, you could turn on audio description, you know, turn and you don't have to watch the TV, do dishes. Yeah. I just did a uh, post about that where it's like the Sundance film festival. There was like the big kind of controversy with, you know, uh, films that didn't provide captions. And, um, but then I started thinking about like, is that's all you really hear about is captions. You don't really hear about, you know, audio descriptions being a thing. And I was just like, well, they're kind of like all one in the same, you know, uh, nah, what I do mean, you think? Am I, I, am I overthinking it? Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, uh, this, uh, just on this one aspect alone, the Sundance, like that's independent yeah, films. Yeah. I don't know how much money those have. You that can was, make closed yeah. captioning with AI. Yeah. They can like, just like read with, um, audio description. It's a whole production. You have to have a script, you have uh-huh. to have a, you know, recording, yeah. and then you have to have a voice person. Yeah. And so like, I just imagine like, yeah, every big budget thing should have it. Sure. But I, I kind of give some leeway with like independent yeah. stuff. Cause I'm like, you know, I, I put, uh, video descriptions on all my posts and you know sometimes like just like even with a 60 second post my wife's like you know struggling so like for a whole movie it's got to be rough yeah it has to be you know yeah and and independent filmmakers they don't have the money or budget really to do a whole separate and they have to like one like you said somebody has to write the descriptions out and that's like a whole thing and then you yeah it's a whole script and yeah and then you have to time it right you know that I feel like it would be tough. It's almost like you'd have to pace the film differently to accommodate for the, the, uh, the audio description. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, yeah. it's, it's fascinating. It's almost like films could have two versions. Um, yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I would have to like, you know, because you can't describe it when another person's talking. And so you got to like time your descriptions in between conversations. And so it gets kind of, uh, it gets, it's, it gets hard. So like, I fully understand why, you know, if they don't, if they do, they get all the props <laughs> in the world. Like, um, like there's a theater we have, um, we, uh, I know it's not Broadway because we're not in New York, but in Vegas, we have a theater house here and they provide live audio description. And every time I go, I'm like, this is amazing. I can't believe this exists, you know? So it's a one person watching it, describing it to me over headphones. And um, it's, it's amazing. Oh, really? Like if it didn't have that, I would be fully understanding because it's pretty much only exists for me and maybe 50 other people in Vegas. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know? So it's kind of crazy. Yeah. And I think that too, it probably increases your loyalty, right? Like now you're like, oh that place rules you know i'm gonna go yep. there when i can when i can i'll support that you know place um yeah yeah and i i support that more than forcing people to um have audio descriptions like i i truly believe in like capitalism and all that so like i'm, I'm not gonna make you do something i just won't buy your product if it doesn't suit me you know yeah I feel you. that's why apple has my life you know <laughs> they they make voiceover and i mean your screen reading so easy that that they own my life now. So it's, 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 it's a smart move if they do it. Yeah. I think that's an interesting way to think about, you know, accessibility in, in the sense like, and I, I kind of talked about that about when I was talking about the captions thing, like, like, um, what's going to, 
be a game changer is like technology being created that makes it easier to do, yeah. you know, like AI, you know, cause then it's like, you really have no excuse if it's a click of a button versus like yeah. you have to go like back in the day, like manually, you know, yeah. transcribe yeah. it. When, when that like AI, like chat stuff gets up there where it can automatically do an audio description, then there's no excuse like the closed captioning because they have AI generated uh, closed captioning. So like when it gets up to that point, then there's no excuse. But for right now, you know, I get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good, that's a good to hear from you, your perspective on it. You know, um, another thing I was going to talk about based off that video where you talk about you skate to escape, you know, uh, yeah. life, you talk about, you know, household chores, you talk about, yeah. you've made a few mistakes. Like for example, you put bleach in uh, clothes and, you know, maybe mess up a little yeah. laundry. I was going to get your advice. I know this is kind of a weird yeah. and kind of maybe boring question to ask, but it's like, you know, ha, ha, any advice on how to, you yeah. know, handle those household chores, you know? <laughs> uh, you get better at smelling stuff. I, you know, it, like you, you smell everything now. So like, you know, you don't really want to smell bleach, but when you open it, you can kind of like, oh, right, that one's the bleach now. So you can just uh, kind of depend on your other senses more. Um you know, like if, if you're living alone, then do the best you can. Uh, if you live with other people, uh, like I clean everything uh, since I'm a skateboarder and, you know, my job's only like four hours a day when I'm healthy. So like I do all the housework here and, um, you know, if something's messed up or if I didn't get it, like my wife will let me know. And, you know, so we have a good balance of like, oh, feel you tried and like yeah. I see why like you missed this one spot or, you know, things like that. So it's just... Uh, not it, it it's it's a lot of just try anyways if you're gonna fail you know sometimes you'll get it right and sometimes you won't no yeah that's good advice yeah i think because you know i i'm been married about two years and you know cleaning man it's it's just it's just uh it has more of an impact than i i ever thought it did you know you <laughs> <laughs> you know, you doing those, yeah. <laughs> those, uh, those chores or whatever that that's expected of you. So, you know, I, I just wanted to know your opinion yeah. on like, if you had any like cool hacks, you know, about like, uh, so like downstairs, I got like the, uh, vacuum that, you know, the okay. Roomba. So, um, like that. So, and it vacuums way better than I'll ever vacuum cause it hits everything. Um, the, you know, having stuff separated, the less cleaning products you have, the better. So like, I have like a lot of like all purpose, um, like yeah. all natural stuff. So I can use it on cabinets or on the countertop or, you know, wherever. So just one, like one and done is always good. Um, but my main thing is just do it. I, I know there's a lot of like, uh, blind or visually impaired or anybody with a disability like it's it's really easy to make yeah. excuses and I do it too um but it's just like it, it especially when you're when you're living with your wife or you know if you're still living at home with your parents the side of community usually you know I know everyone has their own uh, circumstances but in my circumstances they help me so much so like I almost feel like I owe so much just to like so I'm like all right I can definitely do this so when I ask for something I need I don't feel guilty because I'm also pulling my weight and I think we we can all pull our own weight it just like you know it's going to be in different areas yeah no that's great advice you know and, and uh yeah I don't want to eat up too much of my time talking you know i have, i have the amazing yeah. justin bishop skateboarder on and i'm talking to him about how what's your uh what's your cleaning tips man <laughs> uh, like i said just, you just gotta do it. i even mow the lawn yeah just, like dan like dan also like because we talk about like yard work and everything yeah. and the number one thing is you just do just it just do it yeah you know if you suck at it you suck at it but you're out there doing it yeah that's good that's great advice i think you know that's another one of those like simple you know just approaches that I think is effective, you know? Yeah. And you can start small, make your bed every day. Every blind person can make their own bed. Yeah. I want a hundred percent. So there's no reason that when you get out of the bed that, you know, you can't make it. And then that's already one thing done. And then you feel good. You have a clean bed and then it just kind of rolls from there. Start the day with one task and then it just snowballs. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah, it's good advice. Um, I'm going to hop around here. I'm going to hop around. Yeah. No, I saw that, you know, you were in an ad with alongside LeBron James um, for the Ruffles yeah. ad. Yeah, And, that's cool. you know, you've been featured and, you know, guest, guest, been a guest speaker at like Foundation Finding Planning's events. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you had that New Yorker documentary, you know, yeah. do you feel, how does it feel to like represent whether or not it's intentional or not? Like, how, how does it feel to like be the face for, for like the blind community? Or do you feel like you're just representing you or do you feel like any pressure that like you're representing like, you know? Yeah. No, I don't feel any pressure because I don't represent the blind community. Like even in this conversation, I always put my caveat on yeah. because like I do things differently. I was raised differently. I have a different support group. So my experience with being blind is going to be 100% different than anyone else's yeah. experience being blind. I can tell you about my experience and what's helped me. But um, no, my my main purpose and I do feel like I I, I desperately want to be a spokesperson and um and help out as many uh blind people trying to get back into sports like uh like you can adapt your sport to your ability because you know i mean i love goal ball i love beaver ball but that's not my sport it just it wasn't fun for me and i wanted to return to skateboarding i tried uh long distance running i did a couple marathons and that wasn't for me either and until i came back to skateboarding and then i was like this is for me and that's i just adapted it to me um you know using a shorter cane um a rolling ball tip cuz i don't i use a different cane when i'm uh on the you know walking of a longer yeah. cane uh with a marshmallow tip when i walk but you know that and then having sound devices and i was skating for about two years and i met dan and found out we were doing it completely different so it's uh it's kind of neat but yeah that's what i want to do is just like really let people know like you can adapt your sport like you you don't have to give up on like a lot of uh what sided people do no yeah that's great and i think that's something that people need to hear and kind of be reminded of to to even like you said to, to just do it basically, you know, not to harp on that. Cause it's like, that's a phrase yeah. that's over said, but it, there's, there's a reason why. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, it, it's, I, I wish I can think of a better way to say it, but, um, I, I think a lot of, uh, uh, you know, people in general, not even just blind people, but, uh, the average person just over plans and they need the first time to be the most perfect time where, you know, people that just like, go for it. Like I can tell you, my first three years returning to skateboarding was horrible. (laughs) You know, it it took years to get me back to where I am. I'm not even close to what I was with sight. So like it, it, you're just caught, you're failing forward. So I always suggest fail forward. Like, cause if you try, that's one step forward and you might've failed, but you took, you failed forward. So, and when you don't try, you're, you're just doing nothing. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're good at falling, man. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, yeah i love it too it's like my favorite thing like you know um it, it when you get hurt you just feel alive and even with this injury right now it's one it's gonna be another long injury but like these things like it's it skateboarding wouldn't be skateboarding if you know it was easy and safe yeah it's like uh, you know? so it's like the part of the thrill of skateboarding is kind of what yep. you enjoy about it yeah that's it that's interesting yep you know, I, I, I love that you said like you kind of are your own person when it comes to the blindness and you and you don't really think of yourself, you know, as, yeah, as being the voice. Yeah, I can't. Would you yeah. recommend everyone kind of have an indiv- individualistic approach to to their disability or blindness? Or do you do you, do you see any merit in like kind of being a part of the larger community? Like how do you differentiate the two? Like, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I am a part of the the community as a yeah. whole. Like I, uh, I'm on a bunch of Facebook um, support groups for blind, for RP, for you know different types of uh, visual impairments. So like I, I'm I'm a part of it, and I would love to help any way I can. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, I think everybody's blindness since, you know, it is a spectrum and then we all live different lives. And so like, like for me, I was very lucky with my support group, you know, my, my, I have an amazing dad that helped me through it. I had friends that, you know, were forcing me out of the house and, you know, eventually I met my wife and, um, so when you have these support groups, I know there's people out there that don't have that. Yeah. So my experience is going to be 100% different, you know, so it's, it, it's hard. And then, you know, other people like my dad did the tough love ap- approach, treated me no different. Um, we knew I was going blind. He, um, 
you know, really, really wanted me to go to a public school to like, you know, deal with like bullying and stuff and everything like that. And I'm so glad for that. But, you know, I have a brother that has a, a different dad and he went to, you know, a blind school and, um, it, 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 he didn't turn out the same way I turned out. And so he, uh, deals with it in a different way than I yeah. do. So, you know, it's all, it's all, you know, perspective on how we take it in, but, um, the way it happened for me, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. No, that that's, that's great to hear that you're, you, you kind of, I think people forget that. I think when it ter- comes to like the, the blind community, you know, we, people like to simplify it. So like get, put everyone in a box and it should be this way and this way. But I kind of like your approach where it's like, like everyone's circumstances are different. You know, not, not everyone's going to have the same yeah. story. Not every, like, you know, blindness is a spectrum. So not everyone's going to have the same vision, even Yeah, you know, different support groups. You know, I think that, that it's, can get very complex actually. Then I think people try to simplify it, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's pretty unique to, to each person, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's always just like, uh, I, I always like just give the caveat, like, this is how I do yeah. it, but you know, everyone does it different, but yeah, the, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely helped me to kind of, um, like the way my dad built me was to deal with a sighted world. Sure. And then my brother went to a blind school. And so the way he deals with it is, you know, the world should be adapted to him. Gotcha. And there's good ways on both sides. Cause like, you know, he's an advocate and he's always pushing for, um, you know, different things for companies to make us better. And I'm on the opposite end of like, well, if they don't want to do it, I don't want to be a part of that company anyways. Sure. So like, you know, like I, I, I like being, um, blind in a sighted world because it's just a fun battle every day you know so i i hear you yeah you 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 kind of like the um the work you have to put in i th- probably it's probably part of your personality yeah. like you know um it's probably why you like skateboarding and and just kind of your personality it kind of matches like you kind of like to do things your way i would guess yep. yeah 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 i like uh, my way and then i like um i like difficult things difficult things shape you yeah. You know, a lot of blind people, like we have an opportunity, like we're, we're going through something that no one will ever experience in their life that some people have to go to war to experience the kind of like mental stuff that we have to go through. And that like, we can come out just in these insanely like strong rocks, but if you don't do it that way, then you might come out like, you know, like an egg and like, kind of like you could, stuff could break you. And so it's just like, depending on your, you know, the way you got through it, it makes you insanely tough or, you know, it, it's, you're just a little bit um, gentler when it comes to the mm. world. Yeah. That, that's a great way to put it, you know, and, and it sounds like, and, and I've never really thought about this, but when you take a, you know, your own approach to living with blindness or disability, it kind of can, probably makes it more fun because then you're not really limited to anything. You're kind of like, I could do it this way. I could use this tool. I could, you know, have this diet, you know, try this exercise, try to find, be friends with this type of people, you know, you know, get like meet, meet a, you know, romantic partner, you know, that's going to help me here. And like, you can kind of build your own life in your own way, you know? And I, yeah. yeah, you got take matters and great way to take matters it. into your own hands. I think some people, you know, you know, side or no side, you know, disability or no disability. I think they 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 wait for things, you know, and I I think yep. you know proactivity and kind of designing your own life. You know, you, people are in, more in charge of their own life than I think they give themselves credit for. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I like uh, just going on like because you know. They, it's a bigger uh, issue than just the blind because, you know, the average person is afraid to fail. And so it, like when the average person is afraid to fail, that means the average blind person is afraid to fail too. And with, um, uh, in my opinion, being blind, like you don't have the option to not fail. Like we're gonna fail. It's just how we react after we fail and how we, you know, try it again or not give up. Um, but, uh, I think that's the one thing that we have that, uh, other communities don't have is you're guaranteed you're going to fail. So like, let's, yeah. uh, let's like, let's figure out how we're going to move past it and try again. Yeah. That, uh, resilience and being able to, you know, 
get up and try again. And it's kind of like, uh, yeah. Accepting failure, you know, a lot of people are too afraid to even, they don't try because they're afraid of the failure, you know, but if you fail enough, then you, it's not a failing isn't even that scary. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even a big deal. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, you know, your wife and I I wanted to bring, you know, her up because it seems like, and it sounds like she helps you with, um, your social media, like manage your social media. Yep. Uh, I manage it, but no, she does all my posts to make sure it's, uh, accessible. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah. She does all the photo descriptions and video descriptions. So yeah, I, I just want to, it's like a, something that I'm fascinated with. And I think a lot of people are, it's just like any advice, like what, what, what would you give, uh, what advice would you give any single, um, fellas out there? Um, I guess, or women too, just single, any, sing, anyone yeah, single, geez. like what kind of qualities to look in a person, you know, that that's going to accept, uh, you know, blindness or disability? Uh, I don't think it's something you look for. I think it's what you do is just, you just date, go out, meet people. Uh, I know being blind or vision impaired, it's a hard thing to be social, but, um, it's, uh, we're very lucky that like, you know, I think it'd be harder to be social when you're deaf. So like, you know, we have ears, we can like communicate. We're actually pretty good at being social. So get out, be social, meet people. And, um, the minute you start noticing some qualities that, you know, where someone is like a little bit selfless or that like just treats you a little bit different and then you notice it and you like it, then you treat that person good too, you know, cause uh, just because you're blind, it's not a one way relationship. Yeah, yeah. You got to also make a good for the other person too. And so it's, it's leveling out like, all right, you know, like she can drive, I can't, but I, you know, I make money skateboarding. So every couple like, you know, weeks I take her out on an Uber date or, you know, something where like I'm the driver technically, yeah. you know? And so it's doing these little things that, um, just showing you you're trying and that like, uh, that you're doing it. And it's, as I've dated a lot and, um, this type of person is rare. Mm. So like, I know a lot of people expect their like, um, loved ones or their, you know, partners to do more for them, but some people just don't want to do that. And it's fine. It's nothing wrong with that. Um, but, uh, just not everybody's for, uh, to be like, not every uh, sighted person is meant to be in the blind world. It's, it's, it's a different type of person that, um, can deal with it because it's hard for the sighted to deal with us, you know? Yeah. I think that that's great advice. What you're saying is basically be yourself, get, get out there and date and you'll know when you, when you're, when you're around the right person. Um, yeah. And when you meet that right person, respect the fuck out of them and treat them (laughs) good because like, it's so rare that somebody will, you know, cut up your steak for you at a steak restaurant because you know you're looking like a fool and it, that's a rare trait yeah. and so when somebody does something nice like that then make sure you keep you it's not no one has to yeah. do anything for you so when something like that happens just be like yeah. all right i'm gonna do something nice for them later like that that was a really sweet thing or you know it's these little things that um and hopefully you're repaying them and you're you know showing them that you care too yeah so it's almost like what you're saying is like be appreciative and try not to be too in your head about like, oh, what are they thinking? And just kind of, instead of overthinking it, just kind of accept that they're helping you and, and accept that that's part of their personality. Yeah. That they like, you know, is that what you're saying? Cause I feel like a lot of times and even myself included, it's like you can get in your head about, you know, you know, what are, what, you know, this, is this, um, unattractive or is this not masculine, you know, you know, you know, being led somewhere and, you know, that kind of thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I get led everywhere and I am masculine as fuck. <laughs> so like I dare someone, but see, that's the other thing. Like I went to a public school and people tried bullying yeah. me and like, it didn't work. So like on the streets, if people try to do anything, I call them out and like, come on, what do you what, like, say it louder? Yeah. Um, so like, you know, like, uh, but that was what, you know, what I was talking about, like, yeah, I was raised different. Yeah. So like, I don't think about those things, but one thing that like, I did ruin relationships when I was visually impaired because like going blind was always on my mind and so it's like i'm going blind Mm. and 
oh man, what am I going to do? And like, you know, and I'd like ruin the day or, you know, one bad thing would happen like where I couldn't, you know, log into like an app or I'd drop pickles or, you know, miss the counter and like a whole jar would shatter and I would just, you know, take it out on them or, you know, just Mm. ruin it uh, by just being, you know, pretty much unhappy with myself. Um, So, you know, I, I think it's a lot of like, if you're, still working, uh, through your visual impairment or your blindness, uh, don't get in a relationship, you know, be happy with yourself Mm. first because I ruined a bunch of relationships when I was like dealing with it. And it wasn't until like I was comfortable with who I am and you know what I am that, uh, that I finally found a relationship that worked. That's great advice that I haven't, no one said, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. So don't even try (laughs) if you're not happy with yourself yet. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting for me because it's like I have, you know, the significant vision for, you know, RP, some of my, one of my age. So it's like I'm married. So what I'm going to yeah. have to experience that more as time goes on, you know. Um, so, yeah. but yeah, it's good to hear you say that because it, and you know, that's, you know, the whole point of me having this podcast is to learn from, you know, others. So it's like to hear that advice, that just sounds super um, helpful. It's like, you got to accept yourself, you know, or else it's going to bleed that like insecurity is going to kind of bleed into your, your day to day, you know, relationship and the, the vibe you put off is going to be, you know, not that yep. good, you know? And, uh, I think that's, uh, yep. something to, to, I think that's really yeah. noteworthy advice. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't want to speak for women, but I'm pretty sure women are most attracted to confidence. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah and they, they're not attracted to eyesight. You know, <laughs> it's not like that's not something that any woman says. It's always a sense of humor and confidence. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that, that's a, that's yeah. a good reminder for everyone out there. You know, it's uh, confidence, confidence, confidence. And that, that goes, that, yep. that's kind of like the theme of, like, of this episode and what we talked about in, in the sense of like, whether it comes to you skating, you know, just ju- the just do it mentality of getting out there, you know, relearn how to yeah. do certain things, just get out there and do it, you know, and uh, be comfortable yeah. with yourself and be confident and uh, things will slowly fall into place with enough experience and time. People can be like yeah. you in the sense that they feel comfortable in their skin and, uh, they're not overthinking their blindness anymore. They're just, they're just existing with their blindness, you know? Yep. And I think there's a big difference, you know? Um, and that, that's something that I, I hope for and inspire to be like, is like someone who just, it's, I would love it if I didn't even think about, you know, blindness or vision loss or whatever. I think that would be, yeah. that would be so cool if I could just be like, yeah, whatever, you yeah. know? And you, you bring up a really good point. Like, you know, I'm on this high horse, but this is all my advice after I finished the race. <laughs> when I was in your situation, I was broken. I, I was just like that. And my life didn't really turn around till I went fully blind. Uh, so I didn't even listen to this advice when, I mean, I didn't have this advice when I was going through it. So I don't know if it would help or not, but all everything I'm saying is learned after full blindness that, that like I said, that those six years or seven years of visual impairment were the hardest thing in my life. That was, that was the roughest is license being taken away, you know, not being able to enjoy movies at a movie theater to, you know, then not being able to play video games and so much is being taken away. So it's gotta be so hard. So like, you know, I'm, I'm out here being like, just fucking do it. You got it. But like, you know, actually kind of remembering back, I'm like, Oh, it was pretty rough. Like I, if you can't, you can you know, like do your best to just do yeah. it. But you know, even I was broken too. Well, no, I think that's still like encouraging and inspiring. Cause it, it it's kind of like, you know, the fear is right. Like the fear of someone like in my situation and someone in newly diagnosed or, you know, on the avert, on the, on the, on their way to legal blindness or blindness yeah. is like the fear is that life's going to be ex- way more difficult when we're at that stage. But to hear, you know, you say it's actually like the finish line is actually That's was so a relief. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, Honestly, it's exciting to hear, honestly. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the difference between like, you know, I remember being visually impaired and like, you know, being at like a party or something and being like, all right, I think that's a person, could be a pillar, could be a plant, 
let's just avoid that so I don't look dumb. But now if I'm at a party, I'm like, is there anyone near me? You know, <laughs> like it's yeah. so like all that is just thrown out the window. I have no, uh, it, like I'm telling you, like when you're visually impaired, your eyes really fuck with you. <laughs> like, you know, cause you're, you're still using them, yeah. but man, they give you no data. So it's, it's rough. <laughs> No, that, that's, that's great, man. And I think we'll end it there. You know, I think, uh, we covered yeah. a lot and I appreciate you, you know, taking the time to come on. And, uh, I guess before we go, how, how much recovery time do you have left on your, your knee? Uh, so I had surgery February 3rd. Um, I'm finally not in pain. Uh, so I've been going to physical therapy this week. I should be walking like because i'm on crutches right now which is so hard with a cane yeah. um but i should be walking in about three weeks and then back to skateboarding in about six months six months man that'll fly by that'll fly by i'm uh, hoping <laughs> i'm hoping but yeah. any anything you want to promote you know where people can find you or anything like that uh you can find me on you know instagram or uh tiktok or wherever but um yeah i I think the only thing like maybe if i can just leave on one thing is uh just uh like i'm always the biggest advocate for um visual impairment i feel like it's was the heart like like the whole theme of the show is how hard that time in my life was Mm -hmm. so um just everyone that has some vision left just your life is harder than someone that's fully blind in my opinion socially mentally it's really hard so just realize i know it feels hard now but every day that you lose your vision more it gets easier and so just like just realize you're at the hardest point no that's great that's great advice i appreciate you taking you know that the moment to kind of share that with everyone because i think i think most of my audience it has has some usable site so i think uh that'll be huge to hear um including myself so yeah, I, I appreciate it yeah i'm i'm hoping because like just there's just i i remember being in that and it's just i put so much weight on myself and then also being like if it's hard now it's gonna be harder then but no nah, it gets easier it's crazy it's weird how it works that's awesome man yeah. um well, sweet, man. Everyone go follow Justin. You know, I have some links in the show description that will kind of point you to where you need to go. Um, um, go go leave a comment on a post. Wish him a, a get well soon for his, his knee so we can <laughs> see more uh, awesome, yeah. you know, skate content from him. That's it for this episode, man. Uh, thanks for coming on. I really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Super appreciate it. The technical difficulty was worth yeah, it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> thanks for uh, handling and dealing it with me you know so yeah cheers yeah cheers